cry Sometimes it seems so useless to remain You don't have to call me darling, darling You never even call me by my name The Trackside Tavern is a neighborhood bar that's been in Decatur since the early 1980s. It's a watering hole for a wide assortment of local residents and characters who have actually become family after many years of fellowship and fun. It's a cheers kind of place where everybody knows your name. A band of brothers and sisters. A clean, friendly, fun place. But I was actually not that familiar with the Trackside Tavern. I had been there several times to hear my friend Kodak Harrison perform. Kodak played there at least once a month from 1989 to 1999. When Doc bought it, he played there monthly for three more years until shortly before it burned. I have played there more than anybody else, so I always felt like the Trackside was my musical home. I found out that when bartender Eddie Owen first brought music to the trackside, the Indigo Girls, who were not famous at the time, played there along with other fantastic musicians, and that it was quite a music scene. Well, at trackside, what we were doing was on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you know, presenting songwriters, and, and there was a stable of Atlanta folks that grew out of that Caroline Aiken Indigo Girl community, and so I ended up meeting a ton of, of really good songwriters. I branched out from there and started booking some regional songwriters like David Wilcox and mm -hmm. Sean Colvin, and, and we just outgrew it. The scene outgrew the space. I went to the trackside because I heard they were having a dedication and flag hanging ceremony. The trackside, the oldest existing bar in Decatur, had burned down two and a half years ago, and they had decided to honor the firemen who had battled the blaze with frozen nozzles in 25 degree weather and 20 mile per hour winds. After the fire occurred, the trackside family set up an employee assistance fund and the Corner Pub, Thinking Man's Tavern, and the Arizona Pub helped out by absorbing their employees. Now, after two and a half years, and on the commemoration of 9-11, they were having a reunion, a re-welcoming, welcoming back the trackside family to the fold. I got a chance to talk to Jim Hudgens, whose company had demolished the trackside after the fire. He said that he was proud of being the trackside demolitionist and that he was amazed at the crowd the night of the demolition. He said that during the demolition, he thought about what the trackside had meant to him over the years, that it was painful, but long past needing to be done. Jim and his company salvaged 6,000 bricks from the rubble. Yes, we salvaged uh, the vast majority of the brick out of the building and uh, we cleaned and sold the bulk of them. Uh, trackside, Doc Al and the gang, and with Jeremy's help laying them, we used uh, about 6,000 of them in the, for the base of the bar and the bar backs did a really nice job with them. Then I talked to Jeremy Sanford, the renovator. We, uh, we wanted to put some of the old back in with some of the new, so we were able to bring those in to build the base of the bar out of. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we put the bar top on. The bar top's got some of the old original bar top on it. Uh, yeah, did the whole thing. It was fun being there. Longtime frequenters of the place spoke fondly of two characters who have now passed away Mr. Charlie and Cigar Ketchup. Bill Tilliston. Charlie didn't talk. Did too, uh, he was an elderly black man that's your show's and he would come in and he had his train whistle and whenever he had something to say he would blow his train whistle. Um, his family brought us his bicycle and it hung from the track side in his honor because he was here every day and he 
loved the community. He just didn't have anything to say except for blow his whistle. And uh, Ketchup Bill, we call him Ketchup Bill because one thing is when they had trackside, the old trackside, you couldn't bring any outside food in. And so the, one of the bartenders went, oh, you can't have that food in here. And then she, this is like the last time you can have the food in. And then Bill said, can I have some ketchup? <laughs> it completely upset her. You know, we're, and all of us just broke out laughing. And ever since then, we called him Ketchup Bill. He was a great guy. Always sang and shot food with all of us. Good, a good man. Then I came upon Cook and Bill, who cooked many a free dinner for the Trackside family. Yep, in fact, the, the first time I came to this bar was the Super Bowl, uh, the year the Falcons went, and we were out here grilling and cooking shrimp and everything like that, and somehow my name became Cook and Bill because I've been out here for a lot of different cooking activities. And Trackside is kind of unique because what they do is when they put on a food spread, it's actually free to all the customers, and so that's one of the unique things about the bar, but it's been fun doing it over years because you meet a lot of people and have a lot of good times with them, so. and we put on some pretty good food. Too, so. And the softball team was represented. Who are the Violet I am. We're the softball team. Oh, we used to come here after all our games and drink a lot. Oh, yeah, <laughs> in a bad way. <laughs> uh, uh, what was it? We used to. What was it? Fried green beans. Robert Elrod, among others, got his caricature drawn by illustrator John Cox. On into the celebration, the firemen arrived and the flag ceremony began. properly dispose of it and they met me that Sunday at the corner pub when they were doing the fundraiser for our out-of-work employees and two firefighters gave me this flag right here and said we appreciate the fact that you always had a flag over your door we could see it from the firehouse and when you reopen someday we want to put the flag back up over the door well I thought someday was going to be a lot sooner not two and a half years later so a couple of weeks ago, I contacted Chief Dixon and I said to her, you weren't here two and a half years ago when this happened, but this is the story, and I want to know if the offer still holds. And she says, I don't see why not. And I said, well, we're having a great uh, re-welcoming ceremony on the weekend of the 9th, 10th, and 11th. And I said, how about 9-11 in the afternoon? What better day to honor firemen and thank them? Yeah. did burn up, but because of them, you're sitting in the old booths, and you're seeing yeah, some of the old bricks, and you're seeing the old trophies, and a lot of things that were saved, memorabilia that was always a part of trackside, even photographs made of the fire, because these guys worked so hard. Yeah. So
attempt to explain it to the whole flag out. I enjoyed my afternoon at the Trackside Tavern. It is a friendly cheers kind of place. And as I stand here and look at this flag, I'm honored to have met the Trackside family. And I'm proud to be a citizen of Decatur. What a town this is! Yeah. Never call me.